I don't, I don't know if anybody has noticed, but about the last 10 or 15 years, it's been something to make whenever you're making something scary to have to have zombies or something where people you know they lose their they lose their worth they lose their life and they start walking around as dead people well can i tell you that's been in the bible for years it's called the lost amen but how many knows that god wants to find them amen he wants to find them and he wants to go and use anything to minister and as i said it's so easy for us to get tunnel vision. I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes we get our eyes on even blessings in church. We see somebody in church that's getting blessed and all of a sudden we get a little ticked off about it. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm over here. Where's my blessing today? Well, you know what? There's a time in church that you got as much blessing out of somebody else getting blessed as you did out of you getting a blessing. Amen? And isn't that what our difficulty is? Everything in this world is pointing to scream the loudest. Be the squealing wheel that gets oiled the quickest. You be the one that's screaming out all the difficulties of life. But can I tell you this? If you do that, your wheels will squeal all the time. You are looking at me like I'm crazy today. They will. If you want to always be heard, can I tell you what? God did not call us to be heard. He called us to follow Him and tell what He desires us to speak. This morning, whenever we stand behind a pulpit, we don't come up here with our own ideas and think, well, you know what? Sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, you know, they've been going through this, so we'll preach on this today, and this will encourage so-and-so, and we'll stop by over here and we'll preach on this a little bit, and that'll touch sister so-and-so over there, and out of all our message, we'll have something that'll touch everybody that's in the service but can i tell you this if you just do what god wants you to do everybody be touched get to a place in our life where we say lord just use us you know lord help me to be in tune with you that i just don't want to do what i see but i want to do what you want me to speak because listen if i give you my words today they're about as good to that door right there. And you've heard me say a lot of times while I'm preaching, this is my own idea and you can take it or leave it and i give you what my own opinion is about it. But my own words can get you about it. I don't even think they'll get you to them doors this morning. But can I tell you this? If we can speak and hear something from God, I don't know about anybody else. We, and I'm just talking about me and Sister Rhonda, she has been going twice as much as I have. And it seems like I can't, I, I can't get caught up. I, I, I mean, I, I told you all last week that exhaustion just seems to be like part of life anymore. It's just getting to a point. But how many knows this? We've got to take care of ourselves. Amen? Everybody that's in here, we've got to take care of ourselves. You need to make sure you're getting enough sleep. You need to make sure you're eating right. You need to make sure that you're getting enough vitamins. You need to make sure that you're doing everything you can to be as healthy as you can so you can have this body that belongs to Him. It's not mine. I'm just occupying it for a little bit till He calls me home. But this body belongs to Him. So anything that I do... I want to be a vessel of honor or someone that can speak for the Lord. And what happens is, whenever you come in here and you're tired and all of a sudden you sit down at a piano or you start singing a song and all of a sudden the song goes deeper than just your lips singing voice, singing out a, a, a voice or singing out a word, all of a sudden your toe starts going and your heart starts because you start worshiping the Lord with within, not just without, with everything that's within us. And so that's what I was thinking about whenever I was over there at the piano. Whenever I was thinking about that evidence, God help us see the evidence. I said it like this for years. If we could, you know, forensically look at our life, we would see God's fingerprints on everything. 
Amen? We would see God's fingerprints every day of our life because God intervenes for us. Now, I've got something I want to kind of preach uh, to you this morning, and I think it's going to be a blessing to you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter number 23. Yeah, I think I lost it way while ago on this thing. I, I done burn up three three sets of batteries today, so praise God, hallelujah. I don't think I need that thing anyway. I think I'm going to be a little loud today. Whew. Let me get my scripture here. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. All right. Turn with me. I'm sorry. It was uh, Luke chapter number 22. Now I want to start kind of just... Uh, Give just a. We're going to start reading in verse number 31, but I'd encourage anybody to go back up and basically it's the uh, the Passover and so they're meeting together and different stuff is going on. We see that later on in the in this chapter as well they they talk about who's going to get to sit next to Jesus or who's going to be the most important in in heaven and all these other things. And then in the middle of all of this, Jesus looks over to Peter and speaks these words. And this just kind of, it, it kind of blows my mind. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Hmm. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother when thou come through that temptation. And that word converted means when you overcame the temptation. Then you go to your brothers and your sisters and you help them overcome the temptation as well. Amen? It's talking about us needing help. Amen? Us needing somebody else in our life. And if any of us have ever drawn the conclusion, and I'm going to finish reading that in a minute, but if anybody has ever drawn to the conclusion that you're going to get good enough that you don't need Jesus' help, you're going to be fooled. <laughs> if we ever get to the point where we say, Lord, you take it over there. I'm going to take care of this one. You have a seat and I'm going to go through this one. Anybody that's ever served the Lord any length of time, you know what I'm talking about. And you know what happens is, you come back to Him beat up, bruised, and say, Lord, could you help me for a minute? And you know what He does? He picks us up and carries us through. I can't make it through any storm in life without the Lord. I can't make it through anything in life without Jesus helping me. So here we're reading and in the midst of them having a just a time around the table and all of a sudden he speaks and he says, the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now listen. Sifting as wheat means this. Simply one thing. Satan wants to have you so he can grind you up like powder. He don't want anything left. The Bible says that the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I've, I've told you this before. You know, it's not bad enough. The enemy wants to steal everything that God has done for you. He wants to steal it out of your heart. And sometimes we allow Him to. And sometimes we got to go into the enemy's camp. And we got to get that blessing back. And we got to get that promise back. And say, devil, you might have stole that, but it is a promise for me. And I'm going to stand upon it from now on. But there comes time that we have to have more than just ourselves. That we have to stand and recognize that we are in a battle for our life. And the devil wants to grind us up like powder. He wants to steal everything you have. And then it says He wants to kill you. That'd be sufficient. To steal and to kill. But the Bible says He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So here's how the devil's... And I'm not saying this is how He works or whatever. 
But it's not enough that He steals everything that God's done for you. And then He wants to make a show to every other person that's trying to follow God and say, look at what you're doing. A time and a place where the enemy is coming against us like never before and we have to rise up and we have to say, Lord, we need Your help. So the enemy, he hates us or he hates Christ so much he not only wants to steal everything that God has done for you, He wants to kill you or kill your physical self, but then He goes a step further and destroys and all, all it simply means is He wants to throw gas on you and set you on fire. That, that's, that's the best way I can put it. That's, that's the best, you know, that He wants to destroy. He doesn't want anything to ever be remembered of anybody. He wants the only thing to be remembered of you that you he don't want anybody to remember that you were a God fearing person that loved God with all their heart and loved the Lord and shouted and praised the Lord and was filled full of the Holy Ghost and led many people to salvation. He wants you to be remembered as a gravestone in a cemetery somewhere. And he's wanting to grind us up into power. So. I'm going to tell you, this probably got Peter's attention, I think. And I'm going to tell you what happens. Our pride really gets the hand of us coming. Anybody say amen? I said our pride begins to jump up. But he goes on to say in 32, after he says that the enemy wants to sift us as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that your faith will fail not. Woo, can somebody say amen? amen? Can somebody say, praise God, we got somebody that's praying for us when my faith is about to fail. All of a sudden, the Bible says that Jesus prays for us and our faith don't fail anymore. Woo. <coughs> we need to let this Word get inside of us this morning and realize we're alive this morning and we're not dead. But it's not It's because of Jesus this morning. And He's our Savior. And He's going to... And you might not have ever heard me say this. I used to say it all the time. But He is my Savior. But He's also the one that's going to keep me saved. Amen? He's the one that's going to help me when my faith is about to fail. He's going to pray for me. And we know according to the Bible that whenever the Holy Spirit came down, that He ascended to the right hand of the Father and now He's making intercession for all of us right next to, right next to the Father. Oh, I can't go by that without saying this. Anybody remember? I believe it was Stephen that as he was being stoned, he looked up into heaven and he said, I saw, I see Jesus, is what he was basically saying. I see Jesus. And we all know the Scripture said that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. But when Stephen was being stoned, the Bible said he saw Jesus and he was standing up. It got his attention, folks. When the devil starts playing with your life, it gets God's attention. He's like, hey, buddy, what are you going to do? That's my people. They belong to me. Amen? Yeah. And I tell you this morning, the devil wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to grind us up into powder. But whenever he comes walking our way, the Lord's got his eye on him. And we might as well go by here. The same thing that happened to Job, we can understand that Satan can't even touch our life or can't even look our way unless God gives him permission. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And you know why that is? Because God knows when He can let the enemy come and try to sift us. Amen. And if you're not in a position if you've come through a hard battle, if you've come through a hard fight and the enemy comes in and God knows that you're not going to handle, He's not going to let the enemy touch you. He's going to put a hedge about you that cannot be broken. 
But He's going to keep us safe and He's going to put a love and a strength in our heart that we've got to look past just my physical or my situation of what I'm, what I'm going through right now. Amen? I wish right now, I wish everybody's life was better. I wish everything was a lot different than what it is. But you know what? I can't change it. All I do is pray and say, Lord, You said You'd go with me. I don't know where this road is leading today, God, but You said You would go with me. And if I can remember correctly, Lord, You said You would order my footsteps. If we become the righteous of the Lord, the Lord will order our footsteps that we walk where He desires us to go. And can I tell you this? If I'm following Him, if you're following Him, and you're walking to the promise of God and according to the Word of God, you're going to make it. Amen? It doesn't matter what the devil comes against you with. It doesn't matter what the devil does against you. If you stay true, if you stay with your mind and your eyes upon the Lord Jesus and say, I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not turn back. Listen, everybody in this building, you've been hurt in church. Everybody in this building has had somebody that's a Christian to do something to you that offended in some way. But you know what? we got to let it go. Amen? That didn't, that didn't define church. That just defined Christians not acting like Christians. Woo! That's good preaching right there. Need me more here. <laughs> Jennifer gave me a... <laughs> we might even back that up and listen to it again. I don't even remember what I said. Whew. I'm just telling you. We need to get to a place where we realize that God is for us and not against us. Can I just say this today? I went through a lot of my first Christian walk with God thinking that He was up in heaven with a hammer in His head, hand, waiting for me to mess up so He could bop me in the head. That was my ideal of God. Anybody else ever thought of that? <laughs> All i got to do is everything right because God's up there and He's just one. And then there comes this realization that God don't want to pop me in the head. He wants me to succeed. He, he wants me to, to walk according to His promises. And that's what we're talking about today. We're looking into God's Word and we're seeing, in other words, what Jesus was saying to Peter, there's going to be some things in your life that you cannot handle by yourself. But you're going to have to need my help. That's exactly what He said. There's going to come something in your life that you're going to have to trust and put faith. Because listen, we talk about this all the time. What, what makes us different than, than any other, than any other uh, walk is faith. We have faith in God and we're not made to do anything. We do it voluntarily with all of our heart because we have faith in God. But listen, the more mature we become, we begin to get this false sense of security that if I can just get mature enough, I don't need God's help as much. That's false. And listen, here's, the, here's, here's another thing that I want everybody to know. You're not bothering God when you pray, when you read His Word and whenever you fellowship with Him. You're not bothering God. That's why He created us. He was lonely. He wanted somebody to fellowship with Him. Amen? And I'm thinking, oh God, You've done so much for me. If I could just, you know, I don't want to bother You with this. Get out of that. Bother God. He wants to be bothered with you. That's why He created you. He wanted to show you in ways that you've never experienced. He wants to do things in our life. And listen, folks, He's preparing us right now. I'm going to read the last part of this and then we're going to kind of bring something, one other, a couple of things here in with it. The end of 32 there, but I pray for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Can I tell you this? If we are in desperate need of people that spend through situations to hug somebody's neck going through situations of the same sort. 
See, we we forgot we got converted or we we become victorious over that. But there's others sitting in the house of God. And listen, everybody's got to go through the same school. Everybody's got to go through the same life. We we may have different uh, aspects of it in different uh, places in our life, but we all have to go through difficulties in life. We all have to face hardship in life. But the Lord is right here with us. And if we need strength, He gives us strength. If we need uh, if we need hope, he, he gives us a moment. Did you know there's many times in our life that if we could just have hope to spring up, what, what is the hope of this situation? That God could be glorified. That somebody's life could be changed. Somebody that's sick could be healed. You know, we have the power and the authority given to us to do everything in the Word of God to bring it. The Bible said, on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Well, if we look at heaven, what do they do? They're rejoicing continually. If somebody gets saved, they're throwing a party. They're saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Thunderings and lightnings going off in heaven, but you know what's not up there? Sickness. You know what is not up there? Sadness, suffering, pain. <coughs> Everything that we are going down through this life, and listen, if we'll get a handle on this, I think it will help us to overcome most things that we face. Sin brought all this stuff into existence. What are the things that we hate in life? I don't think anybody likes sickness. Amen? Nobody likes sickness because <coughs> sickness brings about death. Amen? So nobody, nobody likes death. How did death get here? Sin. Look at, all the, look at all the failures in my life. What caused them? Sin. And if I get my eyes on that and say, you know what? I don't want to be a slave to sin anymore. I want to serve the Lord. Amen? So now, we see a hope and a purpose that no matter what we go through, that we got all of heaven paying attention. As I said just a minute ago, whenever we talk about Stephen and him speaking and, and him looking up into heaven and the Scripture saying that he saw Jesus standing, standing in heaven. When those stones were about to bring him to death, the Bible said Jesus stood up. I, I don't know how, I don't know when, it just says he was sitting down because we know he's always seated every time we read scripture. In that instant, Stephen himself, the one being stoned, looks up and says, I see Jesus. And he's standing. He's standing there. Think about that for a moment. So that means he, even in death, I'm not alone. Even in death, God is going to walk me through from this life into eternity. And I'm not going to have to fear no evil. I'm not going to have to fear no evil because His rod and His staff, they comfort you and me. Thank God for that rod and staff. As I said, we we let our pride come in. And then Peter says unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. That's a little bit of spiritual pride there if nobody see what's going on. Because he just heard the Lord say, there's going to be a denial, and if I'm 
did not read that part, but the, there's going to become, he's going to deny <laughs> the Lord three times before the conquerors. There's going to be a denial. Not me, Lord. I'll go with you to the grave. I'm going to fight to the end. That's what we just read. Him, his, his rebuttal or His response to what the Lord was speaking. And His response to that was, Lord, I'm ready to go with Thee both into prison and to death. And He said, I tell thee, Peter, the, uh, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest Me. And He said unto, him, unto them, when I sent you without a person's script and shoes and lacked ye anything, and they said nothing. So as we see this, Peter kind of got a little, little religion jumped up in him. Lord, I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to do anything wrong. Well, how many knows you read over a little bit, a couple of chapters over, and that's exactly what happened. He denies him three times. And then the cock crows. And then he goes out and he weeps bitterly. He weeps bitterly. We, we know, and, and we preached on this before, of how that the Lord brings him back and we see that they go back to fishing. They go back to that old lifestyle and, and they're trying to catch fish and they toil all night. And then the Lord is right there on the beach and He's made them a... A, a, a feast there or a fire there for them to come in and he tells them to cast their nets on the other side and they tell him that they have been fishing all night and they haven't caught anything and so they let down one net and as they bring the net in all of a sudden they get this great cast and why in the world he does this I don't know but for some, maybe he didn't want to get his clothes wet but anyway for some reason Peter took off all his clothes and dove in the water and swam ashore. That's what the Scripture says. But anyway, whenever he gets there, the Lord has a, a little bit of time to talk to him while the other ones were still getting the catch. We see that he told him three times. Peter asked him three times. Peter, do you love me? And, he, and basically, after that, and Peter, I'm sure every time is like, oh, yes, Lord. And feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. Think about that. And we see where three times there the Lord tells him to feed the sheep. I always looked at that, that he denied him three times, and then right there he gave up that moment that he told him it's okay. There's not a person that's going to walk this gospel except for Jesus Christ that's not going to have one of those Peter moments. Amen? Where you open up your mouth. I don't know about anybody else, but I can tell you this. If, you, if, you, if you're not careful and you say things before your brain thinks good, you usually walk around with the taste of shoe leather in your mouth because you're putting your foot in your mouth all the time. Amen? But if we could just, if we could let all of those things and say, Lord, I know you're for me today. I can promise you right now, He's for everybody in this building right now. And you know what the Bible says? He knows you by name. He knows you by name. He knows how many hairs are on our head. That's pretty. That's pretty. Well, some's losing David. Hey, praise God. I just, I, I don't know about anybody else, but that's just, that just Scripture. Just start, If I think about it too much, it blows my mind because you just think about that. The Lord knows how much hair everybody in the world has. Don't that just blow your mind? Hey, just think about that. There's a bird that is a sparrow that falls and he dies and God knows every record of it. The Bible said that a sparrow does not fall without God knowing that it failed. A lily will not 
uh, dry up on the field without God knowing. Which brings us to the last point. Every one of us, we've got a time of the beginning and a time of the end. And we're getting close to the time of the end. Amen? I can just tell you this, I don't know what, where we are as far as when the Lord's coming back, I just know it's soon. Amen. The, the Word of God is lining up. We're seeing things happening in the world that's beginning to point towards the coming of the Lord. And all of these things, and yet, you know what? Just like Noah, they just went on. They didn't care. They just, life went on. <clears throat> How many know that it's easy to let life start going on and you don't think about eternity? You don't think about what's ahead. But praise God, think about this. Without Jesus, I can't step into that city. Without Jesus being Savior of my life and me saying, Lord, come in, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in Your blood. Make me white as snow. We cannot enter into that city. Amen? And I'm not talking about just because we let the blood of Jesus touch us 50 years ago. I'm talking about having a relationship with God today. Amen? I'm talking about a freshness I'm talking about walking with the Lord. I'm talking about understanding that you are in the kingdom of God now and God is for you. And if He is for you, who can be against you? Now, I can get mad at situations and circumstances in life. And I can get mad at something that I go through. But if I get mad to the position of where I blame God, I'm cutting off my nose to spite my face. Amen? I'm telling you folks, we've got to be careful because we're talking about eternity. We're not just talking about, okay, go back to the back of the line and roll the dice again and maybe you'll get something better. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about no, no do-overs. Amen? No. Whatever we used to say to kids, you know, no, no do-backs or no, any of that stuff. We're talking about eternity. Once you stand before the Lord, if we die, if we had not give our heart to the Lord, we're going to go to the great white throne judgment. And we're going to kneel, and we're going to bow down, and we're going to confess that Jesus was the Lord. And then we're going to be sentenced to whatever of our life, that whatever penalty that we did not give ourselves to the Lord. If we are saved, whenever we leave this life, we're going to the judgment seat of Christ, which means everything that we've done for the Lord, the Lord's kept a record of it, and whenever we get to heaven, we're going to receive a reward of those things. Amen? And can I tell you right now, it doesn't matter how long or how short of a time period that you've been saved, there as treasures that you have already laid up there. There's things that you've already invested in that you have not even yet saw a return on that. But I can tell you this, everything that you laid up, everything that you put forward to the things in heaven, God is able to use those things and turn circumstances and situations around today. If we could stand to our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we need You. Lord, we feel like we're going through the grind mill. Lord, there's so many things that's happening around our life. And Lord, just help us to just stop and just be still just for a moment, God. And let You speak into our life. Lord, just to say, peace, be still. Lord, those that are going through sickness, God, for You just to bring healing to their body right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, ever, whatever may be the difficulty today. Lord, others today that need salvation, Lord, that they're running from You, Lord, that they may be running away from, from church and from uh, anything to do with You, Lord, but we're praying this morning that You would arrest them, God, that You would allow the Holy Ghost and fire to go forward, God, and to touch their heart and their life. 
Lord, don't let them die and go to hell without you, Jesus. Lord, our family, our friends, Lord, they're, they're not bad people, God. They're just not forgiven. Lord, they're not bad people. Lord Jesus, they're good people. And Lord, You want them to be into the family of God. Help us, God, to be a witness. Help us, God, to tell people about You. Help us to be an example, God. I think one of the, Lord Jesus, the difficulties that we need, Lord, is to walk the walk and not just try to talk the talk. Lord, let us walk and do what Your Word declares and not just talk about it all the time. Let us walk according to the promises of God. Let us hear Your voice daily, God. Let us have <clears throat> fellowship with You this morning. God, we ask You to touch our heart and minister right now. We thank You, Jesus. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, no one looking around. Would there be someone right now that say, Brother Todd, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. Would you just be praying for me this morning? Would you slip up your hand? Slip it right back down. Any, anyone this this day. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we need You. Lord, in this last days, God, we need You. Lord, to guide our footsteps. We need You to be a light unto our pathway and a lamp unto our feet, Lord. We need You, Lord, to help us to hide Your Word in our, in our heart that we might not sin against You. Lord, we ask You right now, Lord, to let us be an example in front of other people, Lord, that we want to walk a Christian life, that we want to be according to Your Word, Lord, that we want to dedicate ourselves and consecrate ourselves. And in de doing so, Lord, that means that we also in our life that we got to rededicate ourselves to You, Lord. And all that simply means that we come before the Lord and we rededicate our walk with Him. We rededicate our salvation. We rededicate everything that God has done for us and we put it on the altar and we heat it up again and we let the fire of God begin to burn in our life. That's why the altar is so important. If there's things in our life that don't need to be there, it burns out the dross. It burns out the imperfections. But it also purifies that that is pure. That that comes from God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, every one of us in this building, God, we want to be able to stand before You and hear, Well done, Thou good and faithful servant. Lord, we want to be able to stand before You, Lord, and know, Lord, that we have done everything we could have done to walk in Your presence. Doesn't mean, God, that we're not going to have times that we've faltered and failed. But Lord, as long as we walk with You, there is a restoration. There is a healing. There is a fresh touch. Maybe right now, maybe you've gone through a hard situation and maybe you just need to be restored. Maybe you need to make that commitment to the Lord to say, Lord, I just want to rededicate myself to You. Hallelujah.